Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Monica. Uh, we are now going, uh, as you said, uh, in this session uh, to the real substance of the mission 4.7 uh, from the angle of curriculum development and the importance uh, uh, of uh, of uh, this uh, ESD uh, and global citizenship uh, uh, for uh, changing the model we teach and we learn today. So let's let's let me start with a, with a very concrete example uh, to to quote. This is the case of uh, a primary school uh, uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, where uh, a, one of our laureates uh, of UNESCO Annual Education for Sustainable Development Prize, um, uh, you know, uh, implemented a very, very interesting uh, project on the ground. It's about uh, the school uh, started uh, up uh, uh, a permaculture program that has taught uh, some uh, 700 students how to reduce deforestation, recycle uh, waste matter, produce uh, food and manage land. So very concrete actions in a, in a part, in a region of the world where these issues are really very much about uh, managing the, 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 the development, but also, you know, daily life and how they improve uh, the, the, their own daily life. So this is to say that I take this example because uh, it, uh, among many others we can, we can refer to, it embodies the principles of education for sustainable development. A, a whole school approach that is inclusive, particip participatory, um, practical and sensitive to contest, to the contest where the school is based. To, uh, to, to, to cut it short, I, I, th I think we have to see that we cannot learn how to protect your own environment or also on the other side of the coin about global citizenship, prevent conflict, combat prejudice uh, or misinformation through a textbook or an academic exercises alone. Of course, it's important. I said before, uh, it's about knowledge first. But the second immediate step is about awareness. And then the third step is about changing behaviors and try to influence mindset in order to change behavior around the school and the school uh, contest. And this is to say uh, about uh, um, you know, the, the call uh, of, uh, of Mission 4.7 and the, the Education for Sustainable Development is a call for radical transformation in teaching and learning practices. We must say very clearly, uh, education must transform itself in order to be able to transform society. And this shift is, not, is only in its uh, childhood, <laughs> let me say like this. Our education systems uh, worldwide, sorry, <clears throat> remain uh, strongly focused on uh, academic achievement alone, or mostly uh, focusing on that. And, uh, and we have uh, really to uh, introduce uh, an holistic approach to these topics, as they are holistic in their purpose and the, in the ambition they, they carry on. But the skills that underline target 4.7 can help also to improve education uh, quality across the board. Co this is about combining the cognitive, social, emotional and behavioral dimensions of learning. And this is uh, what makes us truly human. I said a bit before, knowledge and understanding connecting to, connected to empathy and the sense of belonging to a, commu a common humanity and the sense of belonging to your own community so valorizing the identity of being part of your own community, in all this, uh, uh, in all this dimension, uh, we find the motivation to act in ways that uh, uh, can benefit others in our society. And this is very much about thinking differently and acting very much differently from what we are doing or what we are doing, being done so far. According to uh, a study UNESCO conducted in a selection of countries from all regions of the world, the behavioral dimension received the least attention 
in programs on education for sustainable development and global citizenship. With social emotional skills given slightly more consideration, but far less than cognitive ones. Neuroscience today tells us very clearly the importance of connecting these three areas of for learning to take uh, hold them and be transformative. But education systems have not yet integrated this vision. So our job about this uh, Mission 4.7 initiative is very much discussing with our colleagues, educators, teachers, uh, uh, principals of schools, uh, uh, also you know, uh, ministers of education and uh, their teams, uh, how we can uh, embed better these principles and going beyond the more strictly speaking academic dimension. A last point uh, is about the need of accelerating this transformation. Uh, some of previous speakers already touched upon this point. So what are the levers to accelerate the transformation we have in our hands? Of course, international organizations uh, play a key role in my opinion, by providing platforms for dialogue, providing a platform for sharing good experiences. And we have seen these with Education for Sustainable Development. Uh, UNESCO uh, is doing, uh, uh, is, is carrying on uh, uh, its mandate uh, on that. And we are launching next year uh, a new framework on this specific topic. Uh, and Germany will be the hosting country of a big conference in Berlin uh, where these, uh, these platform will be launched. But uh, of course, uh, uh, this doesn't happen overnight when it, it's about uh, a change in the mindset, a change in the model uh, of learning and teaching is not something that we can uh, achieve in a while, we know. It requires expertise, from universities, uh, civil society organizations, uh, and institutions like the Ban Ki-moon centers, uh, uh, which has the leadership on these topics, uh, to build capacities concretely on the ground. And the same process, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, holds uh, true for global citizenship. It's a concept that it takes time, definitely, uh, to unpack and to translate uh, into daily practices. Uh, Still, UNESCO is working very much on that. Uh, we have a, a competency framework on global citizenship education, uh, which is uh, helping to shape national education strategies. Uh, can mention some countries which are very much uh, uh, committed to, to, to translate uh, and put in practice these principles uh, Cambo from Cambodia to Colombia uh, and uh, passing through the Sahel region. So uh, it's uh, still, uh, a real common uh, work to be, to, to be done together. Uh, and it's uh, about a target which is not, uh, let me say, uh, a technical issue uh, related simply to some uh, uh, small amendments or uh, modifications to be put in teacher's training or in curriculum development. All these dimensions I try to summarize briefly are really uh, very much important to give us the technical and uh, knowledge platform to, uh, to accelerate uh, the, the mission for 0.7. And uh, I think, uh, I do believe that uh, this initiative uh, uh, really should contribute to, to develop a more solid evidence uh, uh, base uh, around the target 4.7, uh, uh, and uh, it's about uh, accelerating uh, the SDG4 uh, roadmap as a whole, and the true SDG4. And uh, as my co-chair, Professor Sachs, mentioned before, uh, it's about achieving all the other goals of the 2030 agenda. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh... It was very inspirational and very insightful and dense with information. Uh, I take away that, yes, we do need a holistic approach. We need to change our minds. We need to have a discussion. Competency framework will be key and acceleration will be key. Allow me still to follow up with one question to you. 
as we are approaching Christmas, people are formulating wish lists. And I would like to know um, what would you see Mission 4.7 should fulfill? What would be on your wish list? And what is something that you might not want to take along? What is something that you do want to take along? UNESCO has come so far when it comes to SDG 4. UNESCO has done an incredible job of leadership, but I'm sure that there are condensed lessons learned that you would like to see Mission 4.7 to carry forward and others that you might not want to see to be carried forward. What would it be in a nutshell? Well, let me say this is a special Christmas for all of us. No, it's still uh, within uh, an unprecedented situation we're living in all regions of the world. And uh, it's a Christmas where we can already wrap up about some lessons learned uh, in, the, in the last uh, few months. In education, uh, the, we, 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 we lived the, 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 you know, the, the, the more disruptive uh, uh, impact uh, we, have, we never saw in, uh, in history with uh, 1.7 billion children out of school. And schools, because of the closure, of course, uh, that many countries were somehow obliged to decide. And uh, uh, we, we also uh, uh, saw uh, governments and school systems relying on uh, e-learning on, uh, as we are doing today, by the way, <laughs> uh, and on technology. So the more we leverage technology, the more we see technology becoming uh, an important component of innovation in education and uh, education for the, for the future. And the more it's important, in my opinion, uh, to leverage the content component of education. And uh, these two sides of the same coin, as I said a bit before, taking care through education, within education, of nature and the planet, and taking care of others and ourselves as uh, main actors of uh, our destiny and the destiny of the entire humanity according to our behaviors, uh, individual behaviors and collective behaviors. I think uh, this is the good balance we have to find uh, uh, under this special Christmas tree this year. And I'm sure that uh, we are on the right track and I'm sure that uh, together we can get it. Thanks so 